Remember the comforting hundred acre wood, the smell of honey, the adorable adventures of Winnie the Pooh? Well, forget all that. We're venturing into a dark and twisted version of your childhood where Pooh and his friends have a taste for something a lot redder than honey. Is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey a campy horror comedy or a terrifying descent into madness? Buckle up because we're about to find out on this episode of Ringside Review. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. I know I'm a little late to the party with this review, but regardless, I thought it would be fun to join in with everybody else and give my thoughts on this weird, low-budget childhood ruiner. Obviously, Blood and Honey 2 has already been released, and now we're getting a whole universe of these movies. So not only has Winnie the Pooh been turned into a bloodthirsty monster, but so have his friends. And going even further, so will Peter Pan, Pinocchio, and Bambi, culminating with the aptly titled Pooniverse. Yeah. All of these guys will be teaming up in an Avengers-style movie that I can't lie. I'm just a little bit excited for. But don't tell anyone. Let's keep that a secret. But before we can assemble the monsters, we have to start with this movie. I won't pretend this is a good movie, but I'm also not just going to crap all over it. I don't think it's bad enough to do all that. So, let's head into the woods as we make our way to the ring to get this show started. Years ago, a young Christopher Robin formed a bond with fantastical creatures in the Hundred Acre Wood. Owl, Rabbit, Eeyore, Piglet, and of course Winnie the Pooh all lived in harmony. But that peace shattered when Christopher left for college, abandoning his furry friends. Winter arrived, food dwindled, and desperation took hold. Driven by hunger, the creatures resorted to the unthinkable. Pooh decided that in order to survive, the group must consume one of their dearest friends. Fast forward five years. Christopher, now a doctor, returns to the Hundred Acre Wood with his fiancée, Mary. Mary is skeptical about Christopher's stories, but accompanies him anyway. You were very young. Your imagination ran wild. And... Over the years, you've convinced yourself of it. They exist, man. What awaits them isn't a joyful reunion, but a chilling wasteland. As darkness falls, a monstrous piglet emerges, unleashing a horrifying attack on Mary. Their idyllic weekend turns into a fight for survival. Meanwhile, a group of college girls rent a cabin in the woods, completely oblivious to the lurking danger. One by one, they fall victim to the twisted forms of Pooh and Piglet, who had actually cannibalized Eeyore. Tina disappears into the woods, only to meet a gruesome end. Inside his twisted treehouse, a deranged Pooh reminisces with a captive Christopher, the line between innocence and madness completely blurred. This is who I remember. I, I, I had to leave. By the way, don't miss a single bone-crushing upload. Hit that subscribe button, unleash the horrors, and become a member of the WWH universe. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. The girls fight back, fueled by fear and a desperate will to survive. They rescue Alice, another captured victim, before uncovering a horrific secret. Christopher isn't alone. There's all this. She's the only one that they, they bought her in this morning. Go, help her, help her, I'll be, I'll be fine. fine. But there isn't any time, just go! Charlene, another captive, seeks revenge on Piglet for disfiguring her, but her vengeance is short-lived as Piglet savagely attacks. The body count rises as Pooh and Piglet unleash their bloodlust. Maria and Jessica escape, but Alice decides to stay and fight Piglet. A brutal fight ensues, and Alice manages to knock Piglet unconscious, but victory is also short-lived as Pooh arrives, wielding a machete. Alice meets a tragic end, impaled against a tree. Maria and Jessica flee in their truck, desperately seeking help, but Pooh relentlessly pursues. They encounter local men on the road, only to witness Pooh's monstrous strength as he slaughters them all. In a desperate attempt to escape, Maria crashes the truck, leaving her at Pooh's mercy. As Jessica is dragged away to her gruesome fate, Christopher appears in his car. A final confrontation erupts. Christopher, fueled by grief and rage, pins Pooh between his car and the truck. But even seemingly defeated, Pooh is a monster reborn. 
He breaks free, brutally attacking Maria. The childhood bond is shattered beyond repair. You left. <laughs> Christopher, realizing there's nothing left to save, flees as Pooh continues his murderous rampage. This twisted fairy tale ends not with honey and friendship, but with blood and despair. As you can tell, I ran through the plot of this movie pretty quickly, and that's because there's really not much of a plot in the first place. It's a bunch of randos that show up in the woods and get killed by beloved childhood characters. Like I said, this is not a good movie. But of course, we have to look at the positives and negatives of it. First, though, we do have to take a short break, so stick around for more WWH action. If you're looking to save 20% from Redcon 1, all you have to do is type in code ANDREWDREAMER12 when you are checking out and you will immediately receive 20% off your entire order. Head over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash ANDREWDREAMER to check out some of my merchandise. We have some really cool shirts over there, so go check it out. And last but not least, head over to Patreon and consider becoming a member of the WWH Universe. There's some really cool perks and we would obviously love to have you join. We're back, and we're not done with this craptastic movie just yet. Let's head back down to the ring for the positives. First off, I want to say, I know how hard it is to make a movie, and from what I've heard, these guys were churning out several movies every month, so I can't even imagine the toll that takes on you, so kudos to them. And these filmmakers seem like genuinely good people, so I can appreciate what they're trying to do. That's why I didn't want to spend the whole show talking about how awful this movie is or how much I hated it. But let's move on now. This movie is just a small portion of this new trend in horror filmmaking where you take a character that's public domain and turn it into a horror movie. And if I'm being honest, I, I can have a lot of fun with that. I really enjoyed the mean one, and I'm kind of looking forward to the Pooniverse. We're also getting a few Steamboat Willie movies. There are others too. I get that these movies are not very well made and they're absolutely ridiculous, but if I can have fun with it, that's all I'm really looking for. So yeah, I like this new subgenre that's emerging. Another thing is I tend to like bad horror movies, especially the mindless slashers. I recognize where they fall short and where they completely fall off a cliff, but that's half of the fun for me. I think there is something interesting about childhood characters being turned into bloodthirsty monsters. Does that make me weird? Maybe, but I don't care. I do think there was some nice brutality behind some of the kills and attacks. This carried over into some of the practical effects as well. And I love good practical effects, so I was pleasantly surprised by some of the effects in Blood and Honey. Maybe that was just because I went in expecting nothing of merit whatsoever. On that note, I do believe it is time to talk about the issues with this film, and boy does it have issues. Let's start with the production value. This movie had an extremely low budget, and that's glaringly obvious. You can see it in the sets, the costumes, and even the special effects, particularly the CGI when it's used. This movie is so dark, it's hard to see anything that's going on. And I'll be honest, sometimes I even had trouble differentiating between Pooh and Piglet just because of how dark it was. Most of the actors deliver unconvincing performances, and the script lacks any depth or character development at all. All of these people just exist to be slaughtered, which normally is okay, but when you don't offer anything else alongside that, it all falls flat, and that's putting it mildly. This movie also struggles to find a balance between horror and humor. The constant shifts in the tone are so jarring throughout. The story is super predictable and relies heavily on horror movie cliches with plot holes and illogical character decisions. I mean, some of the stupidest decisions in horror movie history, and beyond that, they're shallow and unlikable to the point they have go-away heat, and that's the worst thing that you can have. If you don't understand the context of that, let me know in the comments and I'll explain it. But I think the thing that aggravates me the most about this movie is the fact that there is a lot of potential here. There's a foundation of a legitimately good movie. The execution just wasn't there. And none of this is a shot at anybody involved with this movie. I'm genuinely envious of anybody that's involved with filmmaking. It's an art form that requires hard work, dedication, and effort. I'm not even saying there's no effort here, I just think that the entire project was extremely rushed. And maybe had they taken more time to brainstorm and think, it would have turned out a little better. 
But that is going to wrap up this episode of Ringside Review. Let me know in the comments what you think about Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there's no count out for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.